Make sure you guys have got a 532 gap on this pipe, all right? Don't go any less than that. Even with that tighter gap on your plate, the little bit of time I spent with you guys yesterday, I find that that filler rod is sticking, all right, because your gap is too tight. Your 1-8 just fits through there. As soon as you start welding, it just flares out a little bit and sticks to the sides. And then you raise your tungsten, and then you try to melt it off, and on and on it goes. So anywhere between a 532 and 316 gap. On the table there, <clears throat> there's three piles of filler rod. 316s on the left, in the middle is 532, on the far right is 1 8. I don't know why you'd want to use that 1 8 filler rod. In that middle pile, there's also a couple rods there with flux on them. Knock the flux off, all right? Bend it into that shape so you can use it as your gap rod. I don't have quite enough prepared for you guys, <coughs> so you guys can prepare them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with, sorry, I should have that a little bit. I'll just get rid of this. It looks like without. All right, sorry. So, 0 to a 16th lamp. <laughs> I lend myself towards a little bit of heavier land. Uh, so, a 132nd is recommended for that land on your pipe. You can pass that around. You can be my banner. <laughs> When you do your fit up on that pipe, one third sand, we'll uh, we'll do a, a, an evaluation to make sure that we rotate those two coupons together so we get rid of any high low. You may end up with a little bit, especially when you start getting into this used stuff. You guys are not going to start off with this. I'm going to give you two brand new coupons, beveled machined. We'll tack them up using that, prep them using that. <clears throat> so your chances of not finding a spot where there is no high low or is pretty low. But after it's been cut a few times, after you've taken out that weld, by the way, we do a full weld before we take it out. Okay, we're not going to do root, 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 <coughs> and, uh, and then go on to a fill and cap at a later date. We do a complete weld every time on our pipe. Our tacks. We've got a little, couple little, three little jigs back there, guys, <coughs> that you just drop your pipe in. You only have to drop one of them in. All right? And you end up tracing out your quadrants, all right, with your th three quarter inch tacks. <laughs> you got it all tacked up. Your first weld is the 2G position, so it's done in this position and only quarter of the pipe. On my little sketch here, guys, I went ahead and just said pick any top quadrant that you want to use for your 2G. Thank you. <laughs> so it could be either or, okay? And if you kind of thought maybe I'll work it a little differently next time, all you have to do is turn your pipe this way, all right, or this way, and you'll put the quadrant on the opposite side. But that 2G does have to start or finish your 5G on one part of that 2G, but the 12 o'clock also has to incorporate that 2G, all right? So the horizontal weld has to end up on the top. It may not make sense, but top dead center may, all right? When it's on the horizontal axis, 12 o'clock is where that 2G has to finish. So you've got it tacked up. You've got your three quarter inch tacks in there. <coughs> this is at a point <coughs> where you're gonna bring it out to me or call me into your booth. I think at this point it'll be quicker if you just brought it up. I wanna see your tacks because that's the only way I can truly evaluate, all right, what's going on. They can't be longer than three quarters of an inch. When you trace it out, remember your either soapstone or paint marker is going to the outside of that three quarters inch. So your weld should be between those marks, all right? Not outside of three quarters of an inch only. And then show them. It looks good. I'll show you a quick little prep on that. With TIG, you really don't have to do a lot of grinding. It's clean in itself. All I do is kind of knock down my start on my TIG because it's a little heavier. All right, you want that to be able to be incorporated as you come up to it, okay? So then you do just the 2G root, all right? In the horizontal position, and then show me again. We can do an evaluation, is your tie-in good? Excessive, not enough, that kind of thing. Then you'll take it back in your booth and I'll show you how I set it up. <laughs> when you do now, the 5G root only, all right? You only got a 2G on that root, nothing more. No fill, no cap. Then just do the 5G root. Cool. 
walked it up the long side first, guys. If you decided this is your 2G, go the long side. Start right at six o'clock. It'll be a little different when you get into stick. But for tag, you can start right in the middle of your tack or at the beginning of it. Really hard to do a downhill progression with tag. So start on your tack, <laughs> have it feathered, and then come up all the way up to your 5G stop, and then up to your nine o'clock position for your tie-in to your 2G. And all you've got is your root. Again, I like to do an evaluation at this point, at this time, so bring it out to me. We'll look, we'll talk, then you'll take it back into your booth, and now you do a 5G fill-in cap. So 7018, whether you want to use a 1/8 or a 332, you guys are comfortable with the numbers that you're using. You can run it a little bit hotter because your heat sink's a little bit heavier. <coughs> do a full fill-in cap only, all right, on the blue, on the 5G. Now, because it's a 7018, think about starting on the downhill a little bit, all right? That'll flatten out that start point and you can now walk your way up for the roof. Then start back here and do this one. So you always got a little bit of a flatter spot. The hardest part about that overhead is you've got to pull the long arc. Or you start right at that six o'clock position and you end up with that big drape. So starting a little bit on the downhill side, all right, we'll flatten out that weld and you don't have to spend a lot of time grinding. And that's the beauty of this though. You can grind any por portion, any time with this pipe well. After you've done the 5D, it may take three or four passes, whatever you're using, 332, 1D, like I suggested. Then you come out, a look, then we talk about the 2G. Now the 2G <coughs> is gonna have your finish with the weld approximately like that, and you finished it off. A little bit past, all right, your 12 o'clock and nine o'clock, if that's the side you're working on. Now you take your grinder. All right, if you notice, sorry, that should be right about there. The top of your 5G finish, all right, or at this point, the top of it should be in the middle of your tank. The examiner looks for a quarter of that pipe, all right? Doesn't want any more or less. So by having that ground back on a nice taper, all right, your next pass for your uh, two, uh, 2G, you start here, guys. Don't start up on top there. There's no reason to start up there. Start at the beginning of your little grind mark and finish there, or the other way around. Doesn't matter what direction, okay? <laughs> Clean it up a little bit. Always, with 7018, hit it with the grinder. Start on a shiny spot, okay? And then you'll continue with all your passes, slowly building them up, all right, until you have your final thickness the same as, oops, as your uh, 5G. Does that kind of make sense, what I've been saying? Using that taper to your advantage instead of having a big glob to try to tie into. The other thing by grinding that, you're getting rid of any porosity that might have shown 